In this lecture, we'll look at string methods in data frame. By the end of this lecture, you'll be able to apply string methods in various data frames. For this lecture, we'll be working with the food order CSV file. And we save this file where our Jupyter notebook home is located. As usual, we start by importing pandas as PD and NumPy as NP. And from pandas, we import series and data frame. Let's start by reading our food order.csv file. For that, we'll be using pandas read table method. So similar to read csv panda also has a read table method and we pass name of our file which is food order that csv and if you save that somewhere else don't forget to pass the exact directory but it's always simpler to save this file where your jupyter notebook home page directory is located that way we can simply pass the name of your csv file and let's save this in a variable called food order and let's see what our food order data looks like and i'll call the head method on it so here we have order id quantity item name choice description and item price so this is taken from a menu for one of the restaurants. And here we see the various descriptions for our choice. So item name, choice description, item price. What we will do is use certain string methods to, for instance, make all of this item, item names capital letters. Let's see how we can do that. For that, we'll be using strings upper method. So we have our food order data frame and then the item name column. So we call our food order data frame and then we'll be using the item name column. So we pass item name food order that item name and then we call our string method. So we want to change all of this item names to uppercase. So we'll use the, we will call the upper method. So food order that item name, that string that upper. And let's save this in a variable called, let's say food upper. And if we call our food upper data that head, so we have every word capitalized, and we accomplish that by calling the upper method, the strings upper method. Next, let's look at another method. For instance, here we have our item name and let's say we want to find out any item that has the word chips or chicken or tomato or something like that. So we can use the contains method to find out all of the rows that have those specific items or words that we want. Let's see how we can do that. So we have our food order data set and then we'll be looking at the item name column. So that item name and we pass our string function or string method. So str that will be using the contains method. Contains and then we pass the name that we want. Let's say chips. Chips. And let's display the first five rows. Run it. So we get through, false, false, through, false. 
So if we go back, the first and the fourth rows contain the word chips. So we got true for them and then false for the remaining rows. What if we want to display a data frame like this instead of a Boolean true or false values? For that, we can simply pass our method in our food order data set and then we pass it as a list. Let me show you what I mean. So we have our food order and then we pass our method as a list. So food order and then as a list we pass food order that item name that our string contains method and then we pass chips. And then we, call, we close our list there and then call the head method. Now let's run it. So here we have all the words that have chips, the first five rows that contain item name as chips. So rows 0, 3, 6, 10, and 14. And they all have the words chips in them. If I run call the head method, I'll be able to see all the rows that have chips in them. So here we have so many rows, 1,000 rows by five column. So a thousand of this rows have the word chips in them. Let's look at another example. So I just copied our previous line, food order, and if we want to see item names that contain the word let's say meat that head let's see okay nothing has the word meat so we get no result back let's change this to for instance chicken so here we have the first five rows that contain the word chicken in the item name column Okay, that's how we can pass different names by using the strings contains method. Great. Let me show you one last method to remove. Here in choice description, you see that we have those rectangular brackets. How can we remove those brackets? So we'll, for that, we'll be using the replace method. Let me show you how we can do that. So we have our food order data frame. Then we'll be using the choice description column. So we pass choice description and then we use the strings replace method. So I want to replace this forward this opening rectangular brace with nothing. So I pass an empty space. So this will replace it. This means replace this rectangular bracket with nothing. That means it will remove it. So if I call the head method, Here we see that, so in our initial data frame, we have this Clementine, Apple, and this Red Chill, they all have this rectangular bracket at the beginning, but now they don't have those rectangular brackets at the beginning, but they still have the rectangular bracket at the end. How can we replace that? There are two ways to replace that. One is, let's save this in a variable called, let's say x. Then if we call x, 
we have that the same result that we just saw and then I can call the string method and then we can call the strings replace method and then we pass what we want to replace so I want to replace this the ending part of the rectangular bracket and then I just pass no space here so that means it will simply simply remove the rectangular brace then if we call the head method now we see that the rectangular bracket is removed another way we could have done the same thing is by passing this string that replace method one after the other let me quickly show you how to do that so we have our food order data frame and then we'll be using the choice description column and we call the strings replace method and we simply pass so the opening rectangular bracket this will remove it and then we call the strings replace method again and we pass what we want to replace so the ending rectangular bracket just like that and for instance if we also want to remove this parenthesis we can simply call string that replace then the beginning of the parenthesis we want to replace that with just empty space that means it will simply remove it and then again if we want to remove the ending of the parenthesis we call the strings replace method again str that replace and then we pass the ending of the parenthesis and finally we call the head method let's run it now we see that both the opening and closing rectangular brackets are removed and also the parenthesis here so that's how we can call the strings replace method multiple times to remove as many of those parentheses or any other symbols that we want great let's recap what we did in this lecture so we saw certain string methods that we can apply in our data frames we saw the strings upper method to capitalize or make all our words uppercase and then we saw the string contains method to see if our column contains a specific word chips in this case and finally we saw how we could replace certain symbols in our column with another symbol in this case we saw how we could replace and remove the rectangular brackets and also the parentheses now you should be able to apply this string methods in various data frames thank you everyone and I'll see you at the next lecture.